From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Well, hi, Pat. What's new? I've got a problem. This is new? Pat, every time you call me up, you've got a problem. What is it this time? Johnny, did you ever have any trouble getting rid of money? Getting rid of... Look, Pat, this is the thing I do best. Well, not so here. What do you mean? I got $25,000. I've been trying to give it away for two weeks, but I can't. Uh, just a minute. Let me shake the phone. Huh? For a minute, I thought you said you were trying to give away $25,000 and couldn't. You heard me correctly. Boy, you have got a problem. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the shy beneficiary matter. Expense account item one, a dollar twenty for a cab from my apartment to the offices of Universal Adjustment, where Pat was waiting for me, looking very snide. Oh, this is a real twist, Johnny. Usually, beneficiaries are beating down my door to collect. This one is playing at real cost. What's the deal, Pat? Well, it starts out real simple. Two weeks ago, a Miss Helen Gazeworth died. Huh? Insured for 25000 Beneficiary, a man named Elijah Summers. So? Yeah, well, that's where my troubles start. No Elijah. Can't locate? Can't locate. No trace whatsoever. Well, what have you done so far? Well, the usual, Johnny. We've checked death lists, advertised in the newspapers. All I've come up with is nothing. Where did you advertise? New York. That's where Miss Gazeworth lives. Uh-huh. Does she have any relatives? None, as far as we can determine. Any idea who this Elijah Summers is or why she picked him as beneficiary? Well, the only lead we've got is something Miss Gazeworth's landlady told us. Oh, what's that? Well, apparently this Miss Gazeworth was something of, uh, well, an eccentric. Lived alone in a dingy apartment, felt that the world was pretty much against her. Oh? Uh-huh. All except Elijah Summers. Landlady heard her mention him once or twice. It seems he's been nice to her sometime in the past. How? That I don't know. Neither does the landlady. She have any idea where he could be? What he's doing? If he's even alive? No. But if he is, he's entitled to 25000 bucks. so we've got to find him. Hey, you know, you don't have much to go on, Pat. <laughs> Correction, Johnny? You mean you don't have anything to go on? Expense account item two, $36 even. Transportation and incidentals to New York City. I saw the landlady. Miss Gaysworth had moved in six months ago from somewhere a few blocks away. Three hours later, I'd located the somewhere a few blocks away. There, I learned only that she'd, yep, moved in from somewhere else a few blocks away. Gradually, however, a picture arose before my mind of a sweet little old lady drifting from place to place alone, and, well, I felt sorry for her. I also felt sorry for me because nobody along the line had ever heard of Elijah Summers. Finally, I turned up her first landlady in New York. She remembered Miss Gaysworth mentioning something about having come from San Francisco. She thought. <laughs> Item three, $167.20, plain fare and incidentals to San Francisco. Item four, nine dollars and a half newspaper ads in the San Francisco papers. Frankly, I wasn't very optimistic, but that's where I was wrong, because the very first day I got results. The results, incidentally, were blonde with brown eyes. Mr. Dollar? Yeah. I'm Janet Blake. May I come in? Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. What can I do for you, Miss Blake? You're the one who ran the ad about uh, Elijah Summers. Yeah, that's right. Has he answered it? Not yet. Do you have any idea where he is? No, none at all. That's why I advertise. Look, are you related to Mr. Summers? No. I'm a, uh, a friend of his. Well, have you any idea where he might be, Miss Blake? Have you ever heard of a little town called South Fork, California? No. It's on the Yuba River, up in the Sierras, in what used to be some of the gold rush country. You think Elijah Summers might be up there? Maybe. What makes you think so? Just call it a hunch, Mr. Dollar. Just a hunch. Oh. 
Item 5, 2750, a rented car to take me to the town of South Fork. There was just enough inhabitants to keep it from being called a ghost town, a collection of ramshackle buildings at a fork in the river hemmed in all around by the mountain ranges. I looked up the local law, a big, beefy, slow-talking deputy sheriff named Rollins. Elijah Summers? Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for him. Well, who's I? My name's Dollar, Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Looking for Elijah Summers, huh? That's the general idea, yeah. Well, good luck, Dollar. What do you mean? I'll tell you. You find Elijah, you let me know, huh? Okay. Why? He's wanted for murder. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star, there stands yet another flag, representing one of the 50 states. Rhode Island state flag is white with an anchor, first used as a colony symbol in 1647. The motto, Hope, was added in 1664, when the government was organized under a charter from King Charles II. A circle of 13 gold stars were added for the original 13 colonies. This is the flag of a unique colony and state which carried out a most noble experiment in freedom. The Royal Charter of 1663 reads, to hold forth a lively experiment that a most flourishing state may stand and best be maintained with full liberty and religious concernment. Rhode Island state flag, the flag of the 13th state to enter the Union, was adopted on May 19, 1897. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the shy beneficiary matter. Now I knew why Elijah Summers was so hard to locate. After all, a man who's wanted for murder isn't exactly going to make himself conspicuous. How come you want to find Elijah Dollar? He's a beneficiary of a life insurance policy share of $25,000. I'm afraid the dough's not going to do him much good. Mm, maybe not. Oh, sure, he's got to be brought in, tried, and convicted, but I figure that's largely a question of time. When did this uh, killing take place, Sheriff? Last year. Here in South Fork? A ranch about three, four miles east of here. At just Tyler's place. Is Tyler the one who was killed? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, Sir Elijah always was a funny old duck. Just Tyler had kept him around the place a couple years, sort of a hired hand. I see. Now, from what we could piece together, Elijah and Jess got in an argument about some work Elijah wasn't doing very good. Elijah went plumb crazy, shot Jess, and took off in the hills. I see. Jess is with her, took it pretty hard for the better part of a year. I guess it was Ben Watts finally pulled her out of it. She was married just a month ago. Oh? She and Ben are living on the ranch. Straight out of town to the east, up on a rise. Okay. Can't miss it. Figure I'm going out there. Yeah, I thought I might. You any idea where Elijah might have gone? Matter of fact, I got a pretty good idea. Yeah? Over the next range of mountains is a place called Tough Luck Canyon. A couple of hermits in there panning gold. Gold? Well, they get maybe three, four bucks worth a day. Enough to live on. Now, I got me a hunch Elijah's holed up somewhere in there. Have you been up there after him? Two, three times. Well... Oh, so he's got to be careful. That Elijah's a mean shot with a 30-30. Jess Tyler found that out. Side, there's a lots of places up in there for man to hide. Uh-huh. So you've given up on him? Dollar, I don't give up on no man. And Elijah stays up there long enough, he's going to get careless. One of these times I go up there, I'll get him. <laughs> I got into my car and drove out to the Tyler Ranch where his widow Clara and her new husband, Ben Watts, were living. They were expecting me. Sheriff Rollins phoned us you were coming, Mr. Dollar. I doubt if there's much we can add to what he's already told you about Elijah and the, the killing. Well, I'm sure you don't enjoy talking about it, Mrs. Watts, but I... Uh... I don't mind anymore, Mr. Dollar. Time has a way of taking care of most things. Of course, I still can't help feeling sort of bitter about Elijah... But I also can't help feeling sorry for him. Yeah, sure, I understand. I, uh, I gather that Mr. Tyler always treated Elijah pretty well. Yes, he did. It kept him around here when it really didn't pay to. Uh-huh. Then how could Elijah turn on him that way? Well, Elijah was always pretty unpredictable, I guess. No one really knows what the argument was about. Mr. Watts, how would I get to Tough Luck Canyon? 
You? You mean you're going after Eliza? I'd like to try. I don't think that's a very good idea, Mr. Dollar. Probably not. But why not? Could be dangerous for you. Maybe. And why do it? My job. Hmm. I've been thinking about Eliza a lot lately. An old man like that somewhere up in that canyon out in the open. In the cold. It just isn't right. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, how do I get there? Uh, as the road takes off a mile or so from here, you'll see it marked. Winds up through the mountains to about three hours' hike from Tough Luff Canyon. Okay, thanks. Uh, just one thing, Mr. Dollar. This Elijah, he's a good shot. I know. Yeah, so do I. Put a 30-30 slug in my shoulder once. When was that? Night of the killing. I was living on the next ranch over at the time. I was one of them that took off after him. He winged me from 200 yards. Oh. I tell you for a fact, Mr. Dollar, he can shoot fast, he can shoot straight. With those cheerful words from Ben Watts ringing in my ear, I drove back to town. Item six, $35.40 for some camping equipment. I figured I'd be spending a couple of nights out in the open. I found the so-called road they told me about. Finally, it just sort of petered out among the trees and rocks up near the timber line. I started hoofing it. Three hours later, I was over the ridge and working my way down the western slope of Tough Luck Canyon. Suddenly, I stopped. Yeah, somebody was training me. I crouched behind some brush and waited. Then I run. Hey, wait a minute. You're the girl who answered my ad about Elijah in San Francisco. Mr. Dollar. Janet. Janet Blake, isn't it? Oh, I'm afraid I lied to you about my name, Mr. Dollar. It's really Janet Tyler. Tyler? Just Tyler, the man Elijah killed. He was my father. Well, what are you doing here? Decide to take the law into your own hands, maybe? You don't understand. I don't want to harm Elijah, but he must be found and brought back. Well, I'm with you there. Then stay with me, because I think I can lead you to him. Look, Janet, we're nearly at the upper end of this tent. Now, what makes you think Elijah's around this neck of the woods? Well, years ago, Elijah brought me up here. There's a little pocket in the rocks. It's almost a cave. Yeah. He liked it, said it was his place. I recognize the landmarks. Get down. Well, Janet, looks like we finally located Elijah. The hard way. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. It is a very well-known fact that symbols are important to men everywhere. Whether they be symbols of country, religion, or honor... They're a cherished part of the culture and tradition of all people. As in almost all countries of the world, the people of Spain are very religious. And in the Spanish town of Vendrell, the people were having difficulty with a symbol. A 300-pound angel sitting on top of a 150-foot church steeple. The angel had been there since 1784 and needed repairs to keep it from falling down on the heads of the parishioners. But 150 feet is a long way up, and 300 pounds are a lot of weight to bring down. Now, there was a great deal of head-scratching over the problem until someone casually mentioned the problem to someone else who happened to be stationed at the United States Air Force Base in Zaragoza, Spain. It wasn't long before visions of a helicopter came to mind. Because Americans like to help other people everywhere, the Air Force Whirlybird lifted the angel from the church steeple, brought it down for repairs, and later returned it to its perch. So grateful were the people of Vendrell for this act of friendly cooperation that they held a mass celebration of American Day to show their appreciation. Television and newsreels carried the story of kindness. So did the newspapers and magazines throughout Spain. This gesture on the part of the United States Air Force created a new symbol, a symbol of friendship 
and understanding. It became a symbol of freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Shy Beneficiary Matter. Yeah, we'd found Elijah Summers all right. He was somewhere in the rocks above us there in Tough Luck Canyon. And I knew the minute Janet and I poked our heads up, we'd collect a slug. He had us pinned down, but good. Johnny, you think maybe it's... Stay down. Now, look, Janet. I still don't understand why you were so anxious to find Elijah. Johnny, you've heard him shooting at us. Yeah, you're right. What kind of shots do they sound like? Rifle. Matter of fact, a small caliber rifle. A twenty-two, maybe? Like this? Where'd you get that twenty-two slot? This came from Elijah's gun the night my father was killed. But he was killed... Hey, wait a minute. That's why I want to talk to Elijah. That's a good idea, and so do I, but how? I think you'll still remember my voice. Let me try. Okay, but be careful. Elijah? Elijah? Who's that? Janet. Yeah, go on. It's Janet, Elijah. Janet Tyler. Miss, Miss, Miss Janet? That's right. Who's that with Dollar, Elijah. Johnny Dollar. I want to talk to you. I'm your friend. I know you don't. Please, Elijah, he's telling you the truth. We don't want to hurt you, but we must talk to you. That's the truth, Miss Janet? Yes, you know I've never lied to you. You there. Dollar. You got a gun? Yes. Toss it out in the open where I can see it. Well, if we guess wrong about Elijah, we're dead. I guess no, I'm not wrong about him. I sure hope not. Okay, here it is. Now stand up and come out into the open. Okay. Elijah. Hello, Miss Janet. Oh. Elijah, you look terrible. Have you been up here all this time living like... living like an animal? Oh, don't you worry about me, Nana. I've been getting along pretty good up here. By the looks of you, you haven't been getting much food. Uh, enough to keep my eyes sharp, mister. Oh, I see that deputy sheriff fella come poking around here time or two. He didn't even come close. And if he had a... F- <laughs> I could have potted him easy with this. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Elijah. That rifle of yours. It's a good one, Miss Janet. I remember when you gave me it two, three years ago for the grounds crew. Elijah, have you ever had any other rifle besides that twenty-two? Nope. You're sure about that? Of course I'm sure. You see, <laughs> yeah, I've took good care of it, too. I kept it clean and polished. Uh, yeah. Look now, Elijah, have you ever used any other rifle besides that one? Nope. Janet, your father was killed with a thirty thirty. I know, Johnny. That twenty two slug you showed me a while ago. You said you got it the night your father was killed, that it came from Elijah's gun. I saw someone pry this slug out of his own shoulder the night of the killing. He threw it away. He didn't notice I was watching. Later, I heard him tell it around he'd been hit with a thirty thirty slug. You mean your stepfather, Ben Watts? I was confused at first. I I didn't understand. Then it came to me. Ben Watts was the one who'd killed my father. Elijah Elijah was probably trying to protect Dad and shot Ben with his twenty-two. Yes, there was a big fight, Miss Janet. I I don't just remember what all happened, but except all of a sudden they they was chasing me. I, I run. Sure. Ben figured he could pin the killing on somebody like Elijah who wouldn't have a chance proving his innocence. Elijah, have you seen Ben since you ran away? Oh, sure. Oh, Ben's come poking around here, too, every so often. But I ain't too smart for him. Yeah, sure, it figures, Janet. Elijah's a threat to Ben as long as he's alive. So Ben comes hunting up here every now and then. It's horrible. Well, of course, I've got to be real careful, because I only got a twenty-two, and he's got a thirty-thirty. But he'll never get old Elijah. Believe you me, he won't get old. Oh, hot! Elijah! Get down and keep quiet. The shot had come from a clump of rocks more than 100 yards away. I scooped up my automatic where I'd thrown it on the ground and started circling slowly, trying to get around behind the clump of rock. I'd almost made it when my foot slipped and sent a rock down the slope. 
He popped up then, ready to shoot, but lucky for me, his first look was toward the rock instead of me. He saw his mistake swinging his rifle toward me, but he was too late. Johnny! Johnny! Yeah, right here, Janet. How's Elijah? Shoulder. He's all right, though. Johnny. Yeah. It's Ben Watts, all right. Is he? Is he still alive? Oh, yeah. He'll keep. Long enough. Mm-hmm. Expense account total, $410 even. Remarks? Well, I turned Ben Watts over to the local law. And I helped old Elijah fill out his claim for the $25,000 insurance money Miss Gaysworth had left him. It ought to keep him real comfortable for the rest of his life. You know, Pat, once in a while I get the feeling that this job of mine is worthwhile after all. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Alabama's state flag is white with a crimson cross of St. Andrew, the symbol of the Confederacy on the national flag of Scotland. Alabama's state capital, Montgomery, served as the first capital of the Confederacy, and it was on the steps of its capital building that Jefferson Davis took the oath of office as president of the Confederated States of America. The Scottish cross is in the form of an X, or saltier, and is also found on the state flags of Georgia and Mississippi. Perhaps it is the independent, rugged spirit of the Scots that recommended its national symbol to the Confederacy as a symbol of its rebellion. Alabama's state flag, the flag of the 22nd state to enter the Union, was adopted on February 16, 1895. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the most cockeyed case I ever worked on. Not one of life, but death insurance. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Robert Rice, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jeanette Nolan, Larry Dobkin, Jack Crucian, Russell Thorson, and Howard McNear. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. <laughs> <laughs>